The Magic School Bus and the Climate Challenge by Joanna Cole and Bruce Began. Have you heard about our teacher, Ms. Frizzle? Almost every day, something weird happens in her class. For example, take the day we started to study global warming. We were going to put on a play about Earth and all the changes that are happening. The Frizz had brought a book from home and we were using the pictures to help us paint the scenery. Ms. Frizzle's book is kind of old, said Tim. It came out before things really started heating up. I'll go online to get new pictures, said Wanda. She headed for a computer, but Ms. Frizzle was already out the door. Come on, class, she called. Bring my book, please. Before... You could say North Pole. The frizz herded us onto the bus. She pushed a few buttons and pulled a few levers. Then we were on our way to the Arctic Sea, a place with a completely different climate. When we got there, Dorothy Ann opened Ms. Frizzle's old book. The pictures showed ice everywhere. There was still plenty of ice in the Arctic, but a lot had melted and more was melting all the time. How it looked then, and this is an example of Boulder Glacier, Glacier National Park, and how it looks today, and it's um, this book isn't even brand new, so Google it. And then this is the how it looked then, how it looked now. Ms. Frizzle steered the bus plane all over the earth. We saw changes everywhere. So melting permafrost, it makes some places too dry. Water levels are rising across the planet. The coral reef and other sea life is getting bleached and that's actually killing the um, coral reefs. The warming of our planet is causing ex more extreme weather and forest fires bigger blizzards. It's causing some animals to have to move or they, if they can't adapt, they don't make it. Um, strange weather is affecting our food crops. And so there's a whole lot that we could stand to lose if we don't think about helping the planet. Aren't you children wondering why the earth is getting warmer and warmer? Asked Ms. Frizzle. Actually, we were wondering why she was steering the bus plane higher and higher. Most of today's warming is caused by the increased level of heat-trapping gases in the atmosphere, said Frizz. Heat-trapping gases are also called greenhouse gases. She had that funny gleam in her eye. We could tell something interesting was about to happen. The frizz 
was going to show us how the atmosphere could make the earth get warmer. She had flown up so we could take a look down on the earth. She gave us special microscope goggles. We could see the gas molecules in the air. Now our teacher opened the bus door. Catch a sunbeam, kids, she said, cheerfully pushing us out. We started sliding toward the earth on our own sunbeams. Our sunbeams landed gently and warmed the soil. As the heat started rising from the earth, we found ourselves going right along with it. What an opportunity, shouted the frizz. We're going to learn about the greenhouse effect. The greenhouse gases trapped some of the heat. That heat headed back to Earth again. It raised the Earth's temperature even higher than before. As we went back to Earth, we looked down. Carbon dioxide, CO2, was rising into the air. A lot of extra CO2 is made when people burn fossil fuels, said the frizz. Wow, we had finally found out what was causing climate change. It was mostly people, including us. We panicked. How can we stop global warming, we wailed. One way is to use less energy, the frizz said. Another way is to use alternative energy. That's energy made with less or no fossil fuels. And here in our area, we use hydropower, which is a clean energy. And that's just part of where we live in Oregon. Our teacher shooed us back on the bus plane. Like it or not, we were on our way to see some alternative energy. We set out to see generators, machines that make electricity. Most generators burn fossil fuels to spin their turbines and make electricity. Alternative generators make it without fossil fuels. And here's the hydro I was talking about. In the countryside, we saw another alternative, windmills. The wind turned the blades. Anything that moves has energy, said the frizz. The energy can be made into electricity. And we call these wind turbines, um, not windmills here. And we do have a lot of those in the Pacific Northwest. But you have to have a lot of wind. As we flew over a desert, we heard a loud crunch. Out the window, we saw the bus plane's wings fall off. Ms. Frizzle, we yelled, but she didn't seem to notice. She was too busy telling us about more alternative energy. This time, she pointed to a huge solar generator. The bus made a crash landing. Oops, we mean a splash landing. We were floating in a solar heated swimming pool. Ms. Frizzle kept talking, telling us about solar cells. They make energy directly from the sun with no moving parts.
the bus stopped being a pool toy, so we rode into town. Everywhere, people were saving energy. Instead of driving private cars, many were using trains, buses, taxis, and bikes, as well as more fuel-efficient vehicles. Ms. Frizzle pulled a bright green lever. At once, the bus morphed into a hybrid vehicle that ran on gasoline and a rechargeable battery. Can we please go back to school, Ms. Frizzle, we begged. We've been on this bus too long. For once, our teacher listened. And hybrids are, have been around for a long time. Again, this book was written a little while ago, and electric vehicles, or EVs are what they're called, are a big um, consideration now. And so, yeah, it helps our infrastructure if we can think about alternative fuels. We're back, the Frizz exclaimed, pulling into the school parking lot. We put, on our, put our goggles back on and we saw greenhouse gases all over the place. We had to start saving energy right away. Conserve, 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 shouted the Frizz. Recycle, recycle, recycle. I would add, rethink, rethink, rethink. We started making changes at our school. There was plenty of room for improvement. Then we called the mayor of our town. Then we wrote to the president. We told everyone to cut down on greenhouse gases now. Finally, we had to put on our play. It was about everything we had seen on our trip. We showed what global warming was doing to our planet, and we told about how people can help. And again, we're going beyond talking about things like global warming, and we are relating to it as climate change because it is more than just the planet warming that is in the science of this. Can you believe it? A TV station found out about us and we got to be on television. I love that. It's small, it's blue, it's me and you. So there are so many things we can do to help our planet. As we left school, we asked our teacher, will the earth really be okay, Ms. Frizzle? I hope so, said the Frizz. Our only chance is to work together. Every person, every city, every country. And so again, this book was written a while ago, but that message has not changed. We have to work together to do small and big things. And when I said rethink, I'm talking about doing all the things in this book, like saving energy, of course, and making smart choices, but we have to really think about, do we really need all the things be that we eventually don't like anymore, for instance? Or, you know, um, we have to think about where that w away place is when we throw things away. So the rethinking is important. So that is... The Magic School Bus Climate Challenge. I'm going green. I've always been green. So, yeah. Miss Frizzle's got it going on, as usual. <laughs>